This week we are looking at things we need to do to fulfill God's purpose for our lives and how God sees his purpose for our lives and how it works out. So we we'll look at James chapter 5 verse 7. Therefore be patient, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives their early and latter rain. Well, the immediate past context of this passage is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Apostle James is teaching the early Christians about patiently waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he uses an analogy, the analogy of a farmer who is waiting for the early and the latter rain so that his crop will be ripened. And so James says that just as the farmer waits for the rain to come so that his crop will be ripened, Christians should also be patient waiting for the coming of the Lord. Now, we can use the same analogy of James to talk about waiting also for the promises of God to be fulfilled in our lives because it takes the same principle. Just as the farmer is patient waiting, we should also be patient waiting for the fullness of time for God's purposes to be fulfilled. So, what does it mean to wait? Now, if you look at the passage, waiting is related to being patient. And what does that mean? It means to remain where you are. To remain where you are. This can be physically staying where you are, but it goes beyond physically staying where you are. It also means that mentally being in the right place at the right time where you are spiritually. Remaining where you are is not an excuse for laziness. It is a charge for you not to give up and to run away or run off or do something else. When a farmer farms a land and, and the rains come in uh, and the rains are delayed, they don't transplant their, their farm into another location. They, they are patient knowing that the season for the rain will come and the rain will fall on their crop. Now, many times we start doing something for God. We know this is God's purpose for our lives, but we are impatient, and we want something to happen so quickly, and if it doesn't happen so quickly, we change and do something else. And some of us get into the process of changing and changing and changing and changing and always doing something new until we do nothing well. So we have to learn to be patient, as the scripture says, wait because the early and the latter rain is going to come. Waiting also means to be in expectancy, to look forward to something. When we are waiting, we don't just wait by looking at what we have, but we look forward with expectation. The sense of expectation, being ready to see something happen, keeps us in our waiting period. Because of course, if you're waiting and you think nothing's gonna happen, everything's going to be the same, nothing will change, you will be discouraged. But when you are hopeful, when you are expectant, especially when you are expectant for something that is really sure to happen. And one of the things we can be sure to happen is that God's goodness will touch us, that God's favor will touch us, that God's blessing will come to us, that God will always respond to his promises in our lives. So when we trust the promises of God, there is a surety that God would do it. So we wait in anticipation. We wait in expectation. If you're going to fulfill God's purpose for your life, you have to learn to wait, to be patient, not to just transplant yourself, keep moving and moving and moving and never achieving anything. Learn to stay in one place and wait for the fullness of a process to work out for you. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, help me to remain patient and faithful as I work and plow my field. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God will bless you where you are. Just be patient. I'm Pastor Mesa Otabel. I'll catch you again tomorrow. Shalom, peace, and life to you. <laughs>